Hi. Hello again. In our last episode, Ray gives a detailed report as to what happened at that governing body session where most of the governing bodies seem to have weighed in on what to do about the public preaching and whether to go on emphasizing the proof texts that they traditionally used. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the disheartening part of it, of course, is that Ray quickly found out the bottom line for, for the whole governing body had to be, how do we keep the horse moving? How do we keep the horse working? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into this segment where, again, it, get, it comes back to those proof texts. Okay. Ray continues, that is a resume of the bulk of the discussion and illustrates the pattern it took, the attitudes and thinking manifest. I made consistent attempts to draw attention to the scriptures themselves throughout the session, but the discussion rarely stayed on any one point long enough for any thorough consideration. Any biblical discussion focused almost entirely on the rightness of the translation from house to house, as found at Acts 5.42.2020 in the New World Translation. President Fred Franz, in particular, defending this. In reality, neither I nor anyone else had rejected or even criticized that rendering. The real question was, what did house to house there mean? Was it synonymous with door-to-door -door as employed by witnesses, or did it simply have the same sense as in private homes, as the numeral translation rendered the identical Greek phrase at Acts 2.46? I had called attention to this at various points in the discussion. Since Fred Franz was in fact the translator of the New World Translation, I was sure that he realized that this same Greek phrase, katoikon, was also used four times to refer to the meeting place of Christian believers at certain disciples' homes. And here, Ray refers to the four other places. They are, in the Kingdom Interlena translation, Romans 16.5, 1 Corinthians 16.19, Colossians 4.15, and Philemon verse 2. In these verses, he had rendered the Greek phrase by such renderings as, in their house, at her house, and in your house. While the preposition kata or kata is clearly not used in a distributive sense in these texts. Nonetheless, they illustrate that the phrase was used in reference to the private homes of disciples. So in an effort to bring home the point that no matter what way the phrase was rendered, the decisive question was whether it clearly conveyed the meaning that was being assigned to it. I finally felt impelled to ask a direct question of my uncle, saying, Does Brother Fred Franz really believe that the phrase, from house to house, as found in these verses, actually means going from door to door, from one door to the next door? I would appreciate his expressing himself on that. The chairman, Carl Klein, turned to him, that's Fred Franz, and said, Well, Brother Franz, his reply, Fred's reply, began with, Yes, I believe it can include that. Ray says, Note the use of the word can, not does. He then went on to say, quote, For example, on going to a home, Paul might have entered in the front door, and after his discussion, he might have gone out the back door. And so, he would be going from door to door, end of quote. A number of the members broke out in laughter. I did the first time I heard it. But the fact was that the statement was not meant to provoke laughter. It was made in all seriousness. I say this not simply because of then having known my uncle for more than half a century and knowing his manner of speaking when he is being deliberately humorous, sarcastic, or even facetious. This was not an offhand remark made in casual conversation. The society's president knew the question was directed to the central issue which had initiated the long discussion. He spoke both deliberately and with a tone appealing to reason, and he gave not the slightest indication of intending or expecting his explanation to be taken in any other way than as a reasonable one. I felt stunned, for it seemed incredible that such a reply could be made as in any way clarifying the central issue of a discussion 
that had by then already been hours in length. In conversation, Carl Klein had once remarked, quote, Freddy can rationalize anything, <laughs> unquote. Yet I still puzzle at how an obviously intelligent man could offer such an evasive rationalization, one sufficiently far-fetched to produce laughter from his fellow body members. But it was only, it was the only answer my question received. I had asked the members of the body to consider the 12 pages of scriptural evidence and to point out anything whatsoever indicating that Jesus ever at any time set an example of going from door to door. This too went unanswered. Shortly after my question to Fred Franz, the governing body voted to have Lloyd Berry oversee the writing of material that would reintroduce the use of the earlier mentioned text as specifically supporting the door-to-door -door activity carried on by Jehovah's Witnesses. The vote was 13 in favor, 4 not in favor. I found the discussion disheartening. It was not that the vote cast was in any way unexpected. The disheartening factor was the manner and spirit in which the discussion itself had proceeded. Although the wandering haphazard pattern it followed was something previous experience should have caused me to expect. Afterward, I took time to put some comments in written form to give to all the members, but after writing the material, I wondered what the use would be of trying further. It seemed an exercise in futility. I ended up giving out only four copies or so, sending these to those members that I thought might at least give the material consideration, and I filed the rest. Hmm. Even the deference showed here for Fred Franz's opinion. Yeah. It underlines a point I've heard and read elsewhere where governing body members always called Fred Franz the oracle of the organization for the last few decades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even at that level of the governing body, there's a, a deference showed, a dependence upon mm. one man. Yeah. Well, I guess we're kind of used to that when we know the history of Russell and Rutherford. Now, I, d I don't know if at the time when I was a witness I knew that Fred Franz was responsible for most of the writing of, of publications. The deeper ones, we were Yeah, we were like told. the books, the, 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 the major ones. books, the prophetic books. I don't know if I knew that. Now I know it. And, I, and even the translation, that he was mainly responsible for the translation. Is that common knowledge to witnesses? Not at the grassroots level, that's for sure. Okay. But at the, at the top, even at headquarters, apparently it's common knowledge, not just among the governing body and the, the key workers in the organization, but among the, mm -hmm. the Bethel family. I only met Fred France once uh, at my uh, pioneer school. He came at the end of it or during it, I can't remember, but he came and he gave us a little speech and then I sat with him when we were eating. He just seemed like like an old man and, and kind of an eccentric old man at that. This would have like, been in the 70s, right? Right around this time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next segment, the subhead is making scripture fit an organizational teaching. So we've seen here that apparently the, the consensus at the governing body level is let's let Fred decide because the vote is 13 to 4 against re revisiting the mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. And Fred's very, what can we call it, cavalier attitude but seems it unbelievable. Seems like such a nonsense comment to make. I, you know, I can't believe anyone would make that kind of comment in seriousness. But apparently nobody saw fit there to challenge his authority for saying such yeah. a, a strange thing. Laughter they, was about the laugh, only thing they then could get they, away with. They don't do anything about it. So they next, side with them. Making scripture fit an organizational teaching. Mm -hmm. Next time. Mm -hmm.